How's it going, Keene State? I hope you're all doing well. My name is Jordan Travers, and I'll be your host as the Equinox welcomes you to another episode of WADA, or What's All the Hoot About? The show where we give members of student organizations and clubs around campus a chance to use their voice and share their experiences with the community. On the WADA forecast for tonight, we have two guests joining us, Devin Robin and Shaylin Teeter, the president and vice president of the OWL Sign Language Club. So, Devin and Shaylin, what is all the hoot about the Sign Language Club? Well, um, the Sign Language Club is a place for anyone who wants to learn or just be around people who um, communicate through sign or to learn about sign language or to learn sign language <laughs> in general. Um, so we teach sign language through videos. We hold events that uh, help people learn more about sign language and the deaf community as a whole. And we are just a very tight-knit community um, in general. It's just a good, happy place to be, and we all think it's very important to learn sign because it's a great language to learn in many aspects, I'd say. Yeah, definitely. We're definitely a whole community. We definitely get together and think about things to do, um, a lot of great ideas for next semester. Uh, to improve club and hopefully get more members to join. <laughs> yeah. So actually what you just said um, totally leads me into my next question, which is why do you think it's important for people to learn sign language? Kind of, in other words, how can people benefit um, to learn about like certain words or phrases? Yeah, so I believe that it's very important to learn sign. Um, in my personal experience, I've had to use sign with some of my kids, like, and my major and working. Um, it's also very helpful when you're in a huge crowd and someone needs help and you just reach out and you're like, hey, what you need? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think that it could definitely, you know, boost someone. It could make them happy and it can... Um, give them an experience that they've never really had before. It's like a second language. It definitely mm -hmm. is. Um, but it's a language that you wouldn't normally think as a language. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah. It's also important for, like, the reason I chose to learn it. Sorry, Shailen, I'm just going to jump it's in. Okay. <laughs> it's all good. Um, for other reasons, for communication. My uncle, I grew up and decided to learn. I was eight when I started learning sign language because my uncle is deaf and he never learned sign language, but so he couldn't communicate with anyone. I would l grow up and I would hear him trying to talk, but he couldn't. Um, and I would want to talk to him. He could kind of understand, but he couldn't really. So it's important for people to learn to communicate with everyone because everyone deserves a chance to talk and to speak and to tell their story. And so like if you meet someone new and you just as simply as saying, hi, my name is this, and it's so nice to meet you. Like, we teach you those the first day you come into our club. Like, it's mm -hmm. so important. And it makes someone feel good, like Shaylin said. Yeah, definitely. It can definitely boost someone's confidence just being able to talk to someone where normally you are, you feel as though you're unheard. And anyone, it's not like, some other diseases where like you're born with it although you can be it can come as quick as that like mm -hmm. anyone can go deaf it is it's scary to think about it like that but I sometimes think about it because I sometimes can't hear things and I'm like well <laughs> you know <laughs> um I think it is important yeah absolutely and you did just mention um kind of the phrases that you teach people as soon as they come in, do you think that there are any particular phrases or symbols or just things that people should, like everyone should be able to say? If you had to, if you had to say what's one thing that everyone should learn in sign language, what do you think that would be? I definitely think that it would be my name, Liz, um, which is like my name, and then you would finger spell your name out so that someone would know how to spell it. Um, it's a great source of just getting together and getting to know each other um, and it's how you introduce yourself and when you first meet someone you're like hey my name is Shaylin <laughs> and I am the vice president of OSL. <laughs> she says that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. 
So um, I did read on OwlNet that the club is set up very similarly um, to a classroom. I don't know when's the last time OwlNet was updated, stuff like that. So if that is still the case, um, being a club and not a class, how does it kind of differentiate from an actual classroom? And do you have any activities that you do besides just learning sign language? Yeah, so when we're not planning big events, um, we spend time watching videos from a YouTube channel called Dr. Bill, um, which is free, anyone could do it, but not a lot of people think to take the time out of their day to just go online and watch these lessons. So that's what we do, and we'll sit together and we'll all just watch them. They're silent, you can't hear anything mm -hmm. because it is sign language, but we learn from it, and we'll take 30 minutes out of the hour to do that. And then after that, we'll either talk about planning something or sometimes, for example, like right now we're doing the national anthem because um, in case someone were to ask us to sign for them the national anthem at an event, we are learning how to do that right now. Um, so stuff like that. But then there are some days where we can't, we don't have time for that because we're planning things. We're making merch, <laughs> which yeah. we don't do Important that often. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do that often, but we see that a lot of other clubs have it and we want to feel like, because we are such a community, we like talking to each other. We all want to have similar, <laughs> we want it to be twinning. <laughs> um, so we are working, we were working on that. We're kind of at a stall in that because we're doing other things. Um, but some days we just talk about mm -hmm. like what needs to be done. And then other days we do learn as if it was class, but you don't have to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. And it's only an hour. And then sometimes it's usually just 30 minutes of that lesson and then you you could do it at home, but mm -hmm. usually you don't have the time. So it's a nice place to just do it and you're with your friends. Mm -hmm. So what is being in the club like more for you two specifically? Um, kind of what is, what is it like holding a leadership position in this club and kind of what are some of the other leadership positions? What are their purposes? What kind of goes into that kind of like set up, I suppose. Um, our leadership is definitely very different than most. Um, we definitely work as together as a team. Um, most people reach out to Samantha, then she reaches out to us, and we reach out to the club. Um, and it's just like that tree that just keeps going and going and going. Um, but I feel as though we are able to, you know, address something and be like, hey, this is what we want to do. How do you guys feel about it? Let's hear feedback. What do you think? Um, and, you know, our roles are very connected, mm -hmm. I feel. Um, if I ever had like an idea, I would go to Devin and be like, hey, what do you think about this? <laughs> and then she would, you know, ask about it in club and we would get all, everybody's input and make everybody feel heard and just move on from there. Um, we have about 10 billion group chats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, um, because there aren't very many of us. Mm -hmm. Right now there's seven of us. Um, and that's not the e-board. There's five e-board members, I think. Wait, that's including Beth. <laughs> but, well, anyways. <laughs> um, She's a, our advisor. Yeah, oh, okay. but we don't have many people, that's what I mean. And so for half, like over half the club to be e-board and then for three people to feel as if they aren't, I never want anyone to feel that way. Yeah. Um, so I do often want other people to come and bring up things and ask for opinions and ask for advice. What I do as president personally is during the meeting, I am kind of like the teacher. <laughs> so I'll stand at the front, I'll lead the lessons, I'll lead the meeting. Um, we have Zoom for people who can't make it. So I'll set that up. So that's kind of my role. People do come to me for things. Um, when they can't get to Samantha, some, they will email me um, or Beth. So I kind of just take that role, and I do try to make everyone feel as though they have a place because I never want to anyone to feel as if it's not their club. Mm -hmm. And like, 
it kind of sucks <laughs> that yeah. there aren't more eboard roles because mm -hmm. I never want anyone to feel like they're the one man out. Um, yeah. Especially with our club. Yeah, before this semester, last semester, there was one person who wasn't a member of the eboard. So it was five eboard members and one non. Oh, wow. <laughs> so that we like took an eboard member picture and the one person was not in it and I yeah. felt really bad. Mm -hmm. um, and that was like the first day of me being president. So after that, I was like, okay, no, <laughs> we're yeah. not doing that anymore. Um, so now we have like a Discord with everyone in it. The Facebook, I try to bring, not everyone could be in the Facebook group chat because it is for eboard members to like yeah. kind of discuss things. But I do try to bring up the things discussed in chat, yeah. not in chat, in class. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, to get there, to get everyone's opinion before we move forward with anything. And then even with the constitution, we bring everyone to the table to see what we need to change and everything because we are going to change it soon. That's something we've been talking about, so. Yeah, and definitely with my role as vice president, I definitely try to make sure that all of our social medias are very open and very inclusive for everyone. Um, even people who are, you know, outside of the club and are looking in to join and, you know, we just, we're very super inclusive. Very super inclusive, yep. <laughs> <laughs> um, just emphasizing. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, well that's that's really great. It sounds like um, regardless of position, uh, it's really just a matter of teamwork, just kind of the whole club working together. That's really nice to hear. Um, so kind of switching gears a little bit, uh, do you think that deaf culture is well represented on campus as a whole? What do you think kind of can be done to spread more awareness about deaf culture? Um. We're trying our best to spread awareness. Right now, it, all of April is Deaf History Month. So we're doing a lot. This interview, we did a spotlight for the Keen Instagram and TikTok. We're doing a movie uh, as much as we can. And then not even just this month, we're gonna try to do lots, lots, lots to spread awareness because previously, I don't think people really knew about the club as much? No, I definitely wouldn't have known if like Beth wasn't an academic advisor and was like, hey, come check out our club. Um, but I don't, it definitely seemed a little bit more not as open, I guess. Um, but we're doing our best to kind of spread awareness about it, um, get people to join the club, even if they're not in the club. Um, the movie that we're doing is, we're gonna have pamphlets, which like people might throw away, but like college kids, okay. <laughs> the movie still, the movie still is about deaf people and yeah. the culture. Um, we're trying our best and not everyone is willing to listen, but we do what we can and hopefully an inch leads to a mile. That's mm. not the f actual phrase, but I did my best. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you kind of already answered my next question, which was kind of what are some of the other events you've held as a club? What do they look like? Kind of spreading awareness. Are there any more that you would like to talk about? Yeah. Um, we've definitely tabled at like Spring Fest or Winter Fest. Sorry, Winter Festival. We had both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you know, student involvement in the early fall. Um, that's where I learned about it. And um, we're actually having a movie night um, and we're planning on doing more and just getting out there. You know, we want everyone to be heard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So have you learned, or have you found that learning sign language has, and I think we talked about this a little bit earlier too, have you found that learning sign language has benefited you guys in any way kind of within your own lives your own jobs your own majors stuff like that how is it how has it benefited you kind of outside of the club and in your um i guess like real lives uh i teach at a preschool uh so and i have one little deaf boy uh that he has a cochlear implant but i still try to sign with him sometimes and I sign with my other kids too, to kind of get them practicing that. Because uh, I think it's really good for, at a young age, in, I'm an 
elementary ed and psychology major, double major. <laughs> um, ow. <laughs> and it, at a young age, children are very good at language. They can do so much with language. So if you teach them at a young age, they'll be able to develop so much with that language. And so I try to use it with them um, because I think that's really important. And you can use it in so many other, other <laughs> um, professions as well, like the medical field. If you had a deaf patient or hard of hearing patient that needed help. Yeah, I'm also an early childhood education major. And I have worked with kids for three years now. Um, and I feel that it's very important to just at least get that second language in there so that, you know, these kids are our future. They know how to communicate with people who are unlike themselves. Um, they can also communicate. I personally have a couple nonverbal students, and they communicate through sign language. If they want something, they tell me. If they, you know, um, it's their way of being heard. Um, but I feel as though it's very important for all education majors, especially, to learn sign language just to communicate with those kids that you don't normally reach. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so again, you did already kind of answer this question a little bit. You guys have been very detailed about your answers, which is incredible. Thank you. Um, but um, did you have any goals at the beginning of the semester or at the beginning of you coming into these positions? Um, I don't know if it's year or semester um, that you were kind of you found yourself successful in achieving or wanted to achieve and hope to in the future. The main goal was to spread awareness and to be able to grow our club and really help get the word of the deaf community out around campus and do more outreach because we hadn't done a lot the first semester. Um, and I feel that we have done that. Like this is part of that. We've had so many people reach out to us, which is amazing. Um, we did videos, we did all kinds of stuff. We were on WKNH. <laughs> yeah, the radio. Um, we're doing the movie night, we hope. Lots of people show up. Yes, <laughs> we can't say if that went well. <laughs> it's tomorrow, <laughs> the future. <laughs> um, but I think we were really successful with that. I don't think it matters how many people are in the club. I think it's how well we work together as a team and the effort put in by the people in the club. And I think everyone is super great. And we all do so well together and all put our best foot forward and I think that it's been amazing and we've done so well this semester so I'm really happy and think we were super successful. Definitely. I also think that um, I was able to as vice president you are in charge of social medias and I've been able to reach a lot more people especially on Instagram um, by just taking over Instagram and posting almost everything that we're doing um, and a lot of our students have definitely been able to see, you know, what we've been able to do. Yeah. So, um, as we are kind of wrapping up a little bit, um, do you have any other events coming up? Uh, I know we are kind of running out of time in the semester. Um, any more events coming up, um, at least for the end of the semester? Anything you know of already from next year? Anything like that? you want me to say? Sure. <laughs> okay. Um, well, we have rumored or talked about um, going to the college camp for a kind of community get together. Get together. <laughs> a um, experience. With kind of using sign language to play games and stuff um, to build our skills while getting to know each other maybe bringing potluck food and stuff that we've made for each other just to get to know each other while using sign language. It would be more of like less of an outreach thing, but more of like really building our own community because mm -hmm. we've done a lot this semester. And if we get more students in our club next semester that would come with us to do that, it would be really great and they could build their skills too. Yep. Um, so that's something that was rumored. We don't know if we will do it yet, but hopefully, because <laughs> everyone's idea. super excited about it. Um, but that is something. So, yeah. So, 
Um, I guess that is pretty much it. So if you would like to um, encourage other people to join, maybe tell everyone when and where do you meet? Um, how easy is it? How hard is it for people to join? Whatever you want to say. Yeah. Um, so we meet as of right now for the spring 22 uh, semester. Uh, we meet in 309 up in the student center from 12 to 1 um, on Fridays. And we don't know how next semester is going to play out. Right now we're headed into elections to see who's going to be running and um, who our e-board members are going to be for next semester. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Um, it definitely, knowing how club is and being able to be such a community with each other, it's really easy to just hop in and be like, hey, I want to learn sign language. Um, we're very open to new people and very courteous <laughs> to new people. <laughs> uh, but yeah. And you can always email me or Beth because I'm running unopposed. Um, yes. <laughs> so I'm already the president for next semester. If you wanted to email, it's just devin.robin at keen.edu. Sorry for the self promo. I just <laughs> no, didn't know if I was no, allowed to do that. But like, it's totally fine. That's like the email to use if you want to reach out and be like, hello, I want to join your club, but I don't want to talk in person and help. <laughs> um, we also have an Instagram that is Owl Sign Language. Mm -hmm. Go check it and out. And we made a TikTok, but there are no videos yeah, on no, it. Not yet. Coming soon. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> TBD. <laughs> All right, well, it sounds like that is going to wrap up this episode of WAVA. Thank you so much, Devin and Shaylin, for meeting with me today and having this conversation. I really, really appreciate it. Of course. And Thank you for having us. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It was so much fun. So I guess that's all from us. Thank you so much, Keene State. Have a good night.